So now that I know that it just takes a little bit of like a love tap, maybe. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what happened. And now it's not doing it. Today we're doing waterfall photography, running water photography. So what do you need to get good pictures uh, at a waterfall, the ocean, a fountain, anything? And the first thing is a camera, which I'm using my new Rebel T1i, the 14 year old camera. <laughs> uh, and I also added a polarizing filter. I don't know if you can see it on the front. Anytime you add a filter to a camera, you change, or anytime you add a filter to a lens, you reduce contrast and different things, but a polarizer will remove the glare from the water. So sometimes that gives you a really, really cool effect uh, when we're talking about running water. Now, I also have a little rag because things are going to get wet. And I don't have a remote trigger for this camera, but I do have one for that camera. The other thing that's essential is a tripod. And I would show it to you, but you're on it right now. So... Let's head down to the water and see what kind of pictures we can get with this. And also, while we're at it, let me try to get some stock video and some pictures that are more stock photography style. Let's go. Oh, Bambi, come on, let's go. Let's go. So I've encountered a small problem. Uh, I don't know if you noticed when I did the B-roll there, there's a lot of spray that hits the camera. By the way, all that B-roll is great stock footage. Perfect for stock footage. Slow-mo, water, close to the water, that looks awesome. But this spray is really distracting. And now with the Canon R5, I'm not worried about it. It can handle a little bit of rain. This one is not weather sealed. So this camera is gonna, might have a problem with the water. I have this towel that I'm gonna cover it with until I find the the right time for the shot. Uh, so I gotta be really careful with not getting this wet. See right now I'm getting spray. And that's probably one of the challenges. The next one is finding the right composition while I have that water, uh, the spray coming at me. <laughs> so let me get down there. I'll bring the R5 down there so you can see what I'm doing without getting uh, super wet. The other thing I recommend is always using a remote shutter. I don't have one for this. <laughs> I forgot it was a different one than the one I used for the R5 and for the 5D Mark IV. So I don't have a shutter for this little camera, so I have to use the timer. A two second timer is enough. Just uh, something to avoid vibration is really gonna help. So let me go over there, see where the line's coming in, where the sunshine's hitting. Uh, the water and maybe some of these lines here that's the rebel t1i with the tamron 10 to 24 i believe it is and that's and that's what i'm using today so all right too much talking let's go figure this out So I'm also using live view because it gives me a better idea of what I'm getting in the, in the frame. And I can focus much better using live view. I like how the water comes in like this. 
like that maybe it's got a wide angle it looks pretty good I'm getting way too much spray right now I can't see what I'm doing but I like the V the lines here and I'm gonna focus on the closest part right here Is there a secret recipe for waterfall photography? Is there a secret shutter speed? Every lens has the best aperture they work at. This one works at like aperture f11. That's like the sharpest it's gonna be. As far as the shutter speed, I like anywhere from a quarter to a half a second, sometimes one second. That is, depending on how fast the water is moving, how big the waterfall is, and how far away you are. But that's a good range between a quarter of a second to one second tops. Anything else it just looks blah. So that's the secret sauce for waterfall photography in my opinion. And also uh, ocean, the waves, the crash. You can get some detail and still see the texture of the water with that silky smooth flow. But anyway, let me get closer to the rocks, find a, a, a more interesting composition and then go and do some stock photography images. Alright, so I don't know what happened, but my live view and my menu does not work in the camera anymore. It takes pictures, I can turn it on and take a picture, it focuses, the light goes off, it takes a photo, but the I, I have no control over the menu or the screen. It didn't get wet, so I don't know if it was just old and defective and now it doesn't work, which it's another challenge. <laughs> Um, especially with the focus because live view is essential I was using manual focus and now I anyway I'm kind of stuck now so I don't know how the pictures that came out are here but I'm gonna switch gears and do what I said earlier about stock photography you want to take pictures with a person so I'm gonna go stand over there not, not in my boots I brought other shoes now I'm wet anyway because the water got up and over my boots but I have other shoes and a orange jacket a, a water resistant jacket just to stand out from the background. So I think I'm gonna shoot that with a telephoto lens to compress the background, make the waterfall look larger. And the R5 does have a remote trigger that I can do with my phone. So that's gonna make it a lot easier to take the photos while holding the phone in my hand. This one does not have that. I'm also going to try to do the same thing with this using the telephoto lens and the timer. This, I don't know if I can use the timer because my screen is not working. Oh and there's no information like mirrorless have. There's a reason I sold my Rebel when I did. Anyway, let's see what we can get and go from there.
so I figured out what the problem was. If you, can, I don't know if you can see the screen. It is flashing. Uh, no, I just went out. The mirror is getting stuck and it's not going up all the way. So I bumped the camera. So now that I know that it just takes a little bit of like a love tap, maybe. Now it's not coming on anymore. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what happened. It's something to do with the mirror. The mirror is not locking up. And but anyway, I will. Uh, Try to do some more research. I bumped the camera and the screen came on and I could see all the features. You could hear it try to try to try to click. Uh, and now it see now it's on. Now it works again. So there's something loose somewhere and I don't know. I guess I can send it out and see if it's broken. But now that it's working, I'm gonna try to take the pictures that I missed before. All right guys, so I was able to get some good pictures, I hope, with the R5 and the uh, remote. I did for a split second have the screen come back on in this camera and I was able to change it to 10 second timer. So I think I got two or maybe three shots of me trying to run, set myself up with the telephoto to compress the background with the Rebel. So hopefully it does turn out all right. I can't see until I get to home because my menu, my screen isn't working. The Rebel did not get very wet. Uh, I mean, I look at look at this. I did. I got. <laughs> I got really wet. <laughs> so I'll reach out to MPV and see if they have any suggestions because the camera is not working properly. But anyway, I do want to thank everybody, all the sponsors of the channel, everybody that's reached out through Buy Me a Coffee or through the uh, YouTube supers over here. That's really helpful, and everybody that's using the Amazon links. That is very helpful as well. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Andy, get up. Never get to open cause it's too late I could be the one who saves you from this place Baby, they ain't never gonna find me Find me, find me We can run away, we don't gotta stay I can feel it